And we welcome in Trip Eisenhower to the show. That last part, Trip, is the important part. Six career victories. He's eighth in the FedEx Cup this season and 14th in the world, but lacking a career-defining win. Or does he? Do you think he needs one more to define that career? Well, I, if you're speaking of a major win, and, and I'll throw the players in there because – you know, that kind of quieted the, the crowd or the noise for Ricky Fowler uh, when he won that Players' Championship. But, of course, he still uh, lacks a major championship and uh, was so close to getting that uh, last uh, a couple of weeks ago in, in Los Angeles but faltered on Sunday. Tony is that guy that, that is lacking that. There is no question about that. But many of us said when he got that second win, and it was five years between wins, his first win in Puerto Rico and then winning again in a playoff event, the Northern Trust at Liberty National, beating Cam Smith in a playoff. Uh, I, I think uh, you, you listen to him now, and he has that aspect. He knows he's got the game. He's got the physical skills. And that was the, one of the things that was, was bothering him is everybody was saying, you're too good to only have one win. You're going to have to get more. And he, he now you, you listen to him talk, and that was the key thing there, uh, changing the mindset of convincing yourself, gosh, it's really hard to win on tour. And it wasn't like he was uh, doing anything wrong when he had you know, seven or eight second-place finishes where he was playing well. He just got run down by a fast-charging Webb Simpson in Phoenix. He got run down, you know, Max Homa. He, he missed a couple of key putts at Genesis, and Max Homa ended up beating him in a playoff. He wasn't shooting bad scores, so it was like, okay, He's doing everything right. But that little bit, this is how mental the game is at the top, is changing that mindset of hearing himself in press conferences say, gosh, it's really hard to win on tour, to say, no, I've got the skills to do it, and I believe I can do it. And if I play best, I, at my best, I can win anywhere in the world. That little difference is why he has six wins. And, oh, by the way, four wins in a 16-start span or 16 start span. There's only a couple of players that can say that recently. That's John Rahm, Rory Mack. McElroy, Patrick Cantlay, and by the way, Scotty Scheffler. So he's put himself in the elite of the elite, no question about it. But yes, he is lacking that win, and he has played well in majors. He's had top tens in all four. His best is a third at the Open Championship a couple of years ago. But I think that will be the key defining moment. And one other thing I will say, did you hear him? He, he didn't say, if I get number seven. He said, when I get number seven, then I'm going to get number eight. Mm. That's a key right there, that little mindset change and your verbiage that you use with yourself. I like the point, Jaime Diaz, that Tripp used about Ricky Fowler. When he won a player's, all the attention kind of went away. Nobody really was bothered by the fact that yeah. he has not won a major championship. And Finau is getting pretty close to that level of best player never to have won the big one. Well, yes, and he's definitely felt all that expectation before he won his second one. He got over that hurdle, and people sort of gave him a, a break for a while, but he's just too good not to have more expectation. It's just the burden of all the talent he has. I think one uh, adjustment that he's made is the way he plays. I mean, he wasn't ever a pure power player, even though he grew up being an immense power player. I mean, he was sitting at 400 yards when he was a teenager. <laughs> And he came out on tour and controlled it a little more, but he still was hitting it quite far. He has gotten actually almost average tour length now. Mm. Uh, he, he swings at 117 miles an hour, which is just about the tour. He's 60th on tour in, in the ranking. And he's only 304 yards, 53rd in, in driving distance. I mean, this is a guy who, when he was messing around with speed training, could get over 200 miles an hour ball speed. But he's found that precision and being in the fairway and being consistent is what gets him to Sunday, puts him in position to, to win more. And, he, yeah, he could blow fields away, I guess, if he put it all together with all that wonderful strength. But it's not the way that he feels comfortable controlling his four days of golf. Mm. And so he's a guy who actually is figuring out as he goes along, evolving really as a player, uh, somebody who actually kind of got a start in golf that was a little bit, you know, kind of at loose ends and ramshackle. He didn't have all the advantages. So he's been a late maturer. I think he continues to improve. He's 33. His golf's still ahead of him, I believe. That's a, good point. That's, a, that's a good point about the fact that he could hit it longer, but he doesn't. He manages no, the game. No, he's the opposite of what yeah. everybody else is exactly. trying to do. Exactly. It's amazing.